Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James, and welcome back to our Unity RPG tutorial series. Now, before we move on and we start adding some more uh, uh, systems to our game, we want to fix up something that is uh, works on a very basic level at the moment, but could do with being a little bit more robust and a little bit more um, useful in multiple situations, which is are going in and out of buildings, are going in and out of different areas and stuff like that. So at the moment, the way it works, if we uh, load up our game here, we see our player starts off in the top left corner here, but we go immediately to the only uh, start point that we have in the level. And if we walk into this building here, then we can walk back out and we find ourselves back outside at the same point. And that's fine, but if we were to, for example, create uh, a second start point, let's just duplicate this one here. And I'll just move it around. So say we were to put a, a secret exit out of, the, out of this house. If we just save this and load up our inside of the house. And we drag over to where it is here. And if we were to put another, we have our one exit here. And if we were to put another one, say here, for example, or say we're, we're, we're imagining this, tele, this bed will teleport us, teleport us outside. Uh, so we've got two exits now. And that's fine, but if we were to use one of these and we go back to our main level, so let's just test it out and see what happens. Um, basically, we'll have two start points. We actually might even have an issue here now. Here we go. We, we went to this start point, but the game doesn't really know which one of these to choose. So if we go back in here, we go out. We actually managed to use that one. If we go to here and go back out, we're getting sent to this start point. So we need a way to distinguish between these two different things. So we're just going to add a couple of little things to the scripts we already have that will enable us to be able to tell the difference between each one. And basically all we're going to do is give each entrance and exit a unique kind of just a unique name to identify it. It doesn't have to be unique within the whole entire game or anything like that. It just needs to be unique within this one scene in the world. So what we'll do is we'll go into our scripts folder and we're going to open up the three scripts that we use um, well, two scripts that we use in relation to, do, to these things, uh, as well as the player controller script, which we're going to use to um, control where the player should be coming in and out of. So we need the, um, which one's there? Our load new area script. We need to open that one up. And we'll also need our player controller script. So we'll just wait for MonoDevelop to start up here. So we need our player controller, and we'll need the player start point. So we'll just give Mono develop a second to catch up, and here we go. And our start point should open here as well. There we go. Okay, so we've got the three of these guys open. At the moment, our player controller doesn't really do anything in relation to our start point. All it does is, uh, it's what our start point is looking for, is looking for the player, and it's moving it to whatever start point we have. So basically, at a very basic level, What's happening when we have multiple start points in the area is all of them are trying to set the player and the camera's position at the same time. So we needed a way to tell each individual start point, no, you don't you don't want to be the one loading the player at the moment because the player wants to stay or wants to be either loaded up by a different thing or maybe we want the player to start at a certain um for example in our default scene here, we want the player to start up here, so we don't need a start point to load the player at all. So what we're going to do is, we're going to add, down below our start direction, we're going to add a string here. So we're going to say public string, um, what do we call this? We call this the point name. So this will be the name of the point uh, where the player is starting. And much like we've used strings before to use the, for when we were loading a new area, we were putting a string name for the name of the object. We're still using the same kind of string idea here. So if we're using a unique name here to load the player, when we load a new area, we also want to be able to give a unique name so that the areas know which ones to load. So again, we're going to use another string here. We're going to just put in um, public string, and we'll just say exit point, because we're saying this is going to be the name of the exit point. Um, let's just save this and we convert it if we need to, but we should be okay in general. Um, okay, so we've got our exit point and our uh, point name here. And we're going to add one more variable, the exact same thing basically, to our player controller. And here we're going to say just public string. And this time we're going to call it the start point. And it should become 
clear as we put it all together here now why we're calling these things what we are. So basically, the order of how everything's going to work is obviously to load to start off in a new area, our player has first has to go into one of these load new area scripts from the old area. So we walk into an exit area, then we load up in a new place. So when we walk into this exit area, what we want to do is set on our player controller, we want to set the start point for where the player will be in the next area. We want to set that to be equal whatever name we give the exit point here. So obviously to do that, we're going to need a reference to the player controller itself. So we'll say here a private player controller called the player. And then in our start function, same as we've done with some other stuff before, we want to find the player. So we need to say the player is equal to find object of type player and then we hit our semicolon. No, not player prep, sorry. We need to find object of type player controller. Sorry, that was a little bit off there by me. So when we have our player controller, then when we know that our player walks into that area, what we can do here is say, okay, the player dot if we go back to our player controller, we want to use the start point variable here. So the player dot start point is equal to our current exit point. So now if we just save that and we'll go back in here and we'll just use, we won't run it through the game yet because it won't actually be working for us. But if we see on our house entry here, which is our point where we load into the game, uh, we can see we, we have a slot here for our exit point. So we'll say, we'll call this test house in because we're going into the test house here. And then what will happen is, actually, yeah, we can run this bit. What will happen is as soon as we walk into that box, it'll go, okay, we're inside now. And if we look at the player and look at the player controller, now his start point text here has been set as test house in. So now we know if we were to, if we load that level back up, if we find the right folder to load it, here we go. Yeah, we saved the changes there. So now we know that on the, on the start point in here, if we were to give a point name to this, if we were to call this one test house in, then we would know by default, if we can match up those two uh, strings to have the same name, then we know that we're looking for the right thing. So if we go back now to our player start point script, we have our point name. And here, instead of just automatically moving the player to this particular start point, what we can do is put a little space there after, because we need to be able to find the player no matter what. But what we want to do here is say, if uh, on the player, the player dot start point, if that is equal to whatever the point name is in here so that's if we go back here that's what we're what value we're putting here so if we traveled from the outside with the test house in and we came in here then we would check and see if test house in is what is stored in the player at the moment and if it is then we know that the player can start here so we can put a curly bracket there and then just after all this uh, reset and position stuff is done we put another curly bracket like that and then we have uh, basically, we've re rewritten everything so it'll work just the way we want it to now. So if we go back into our game here, um, if we go into our main area, we'll save this. So now, all the start points in here should be doing that check. And by default, our player has nothing in the start point here. So it won't know... Um, the start points themselves won't know to pull the player in. Although at the moment we have created two start points and both of them have blank in them. So they will actually still do the same thing of trying to pull the player into position. So let's give them some different names. So this start point down here, that's the normal one for when we're coming out of this house. So we'll call this one our test house out. So we know that we're coming out of the test house and for the other start point, we'll call this one test house secret out. Okay, so now that we know we're, we're, what we're calling those two things, let's go back into our house here. And we have our normal exit. 
So we'll give that the label of test house out. And our second exit, we'll give this test house secret out. And you just want to make sure that you have the labels being the same thing for both the in and the out of the of the houses, of the linked kind of pairs within the world. Um, so if we go back here, just want to make sure I did call it test house secret out. I didn't call I did, yes, okay, so I, just, I was confusing myself to make sure I had the right thing. But now we should see, when we actually load up the game, instead of the player being pulled down to here to start the level, we're starting off in the in the place we actually want to start off, which is in the top kind of left corner up here. Oh, we've got an error down here, I didn't even notice. Um, oh, it's because we're, instead of checking to see if they're equal to each other, we're setting them to be equal to each other. So of course, when you're doing an if statement and you want to compare two things, you need to make sure that you use two equal signs rather than just one. So we'll just save this and go back in. And that should disappear, perfect. Okay, we'll hit play here. And now, so we uh, we spawn up in the top left corner just the way we wanted to, and I'm gonna hold I'm going to highlight the player here so we can see what gets filled into the start points along the way. So now, if we walk into the house, if we can, so we, we loaded the test house in, we started at the exact right point that we wanted to. If we go back out, we start in the right place here because we use test house out. We go back in again and use the secret exit. Now we started at the exact right place that we wanted to come out at. So that's the basics of creating this kind of linked system so that you know no matter what house you go into you're always keeping track of the same place and you're coming out in the right place every time the only thing that's important to remember is to keep your names of uh, the entrances and exits to be the exact same so that we're coming out the right places so everything needs to be spelled the exact same and have the same spaces and the same capitalization and stuff like that so there you go that's the basic kind of Simple way to make our going in and out of areas be consistent and now we're not just popping around all over the place in the world Now we could have 50 different houses around this area if we wanted to and we know we're always going to come out in the right place every single time So thanks for watching this episode and I'll be back soon with more tutorial goodness Thanks for checking out this episode and if you want even more games plus James goodness Make sure you hit those subscribe and like buttons you can also find me on Twitter and Facebook by following the links on screen where you can find out all the latest news about the channel. And if you want to help support the show, check out the Patreon page where you can get exclusive content in return for helping make the channel even better. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more.